Welcome back to Business Ventures. Today I just wanted to make a bit more of a relaxed, long form content video, kind of going through my portfolio updates, um, my personal finance, um, housing situations, kind of news, um, news around AI chatbots, rewriting section uh, 230, um, the train derailments, just an overall channel overview, and yeah, just kind of a bit more of a broader longer form content uh, type of video. So yeah, that's kind of what I had planned today. I know usually I do around the 10 minute videos, especially when I do these check-ins, but yeah, today I kind of wanted to expand it and um, do a bit more of a long form content and see how that kind of played out um, for my channel and yeah, see how I enjoyed it as well. Cause I know that's something I like to watch and listen to. So over just the short, um, highly edited kind of clips. So to kind of go through the parts I wanted to go through first was uh, I said I'd go through my stake portfolio first. Um, just a bit of updates, kind of how things are looking, how it's going. Not much has changed. Um, I've touched on another video as kind of my goal for um, February, and that wasn't really around investing too much. It was more about savings. So, but you can see I actually did recently just get a dividend payment. So. Yeah, there we go. We got the dividend from JP Morgan and then the small dividend from Apple, which is, yeah, I remember when I just mainly had tech and you get these really small dividends. It's nice to see it grow, but actually I do want to have a quick look where you see, you see we're at the 327 now for my Apple dividend. And I did this in another video going back kind of to when I started and it's so good seeing like the compound and even though it's so small, especially when you compare it to other, di other dividends, but like yeah, you see when you start and it was around, you see the much smaller um, 145 and now it's all the way up to the 327. So it's over doubled and yeah, look at these you big f for myself, small for other people. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to go through first in my portfolio and my kind of the plan. So for this week, I will be probably putting another $200 into this account. But like I said, I'm trying to get my Vanguard account, which is this one to match up closer to size to my stake portfolio because that's kind of a bit outweighed now. And yeah, looking at it, I haven't really done any transactions. You could see it was just kind of those two dividends from this month. Um, going through my stocks in general, it's been a pretty good month. My portfolio was nearly up, but things have kind of come down again recently. You can see it on with just the overall kind of market. You look at the last month, it's gone up, but yeah, a little bit of a drawback recently. Overall, um, nothing too crazy has really happened with my stake position. Just kind of keeping this, but my Vanguard position is where I will be adding to. Um, in regards with this, it's still the same as my last portfolio update, sitting around that almost that four thousand two hundred dollars. But yeah, I'm going to be putting another five hundred dollars in, and I'm not too sure which position I'll put into. It doesn't matter too much to me, but as long as I'm just consistently putting in money and growing the portfolio. Cause yeah, at the end of the year, I wanted it to uh, be around that $10,000 range. I wanted my stake portfolio to be around 20,000 Australian dollars. It's getting close to like that $18,000 range now. And then yeah, just in regards with my savings, just saving up more and more and more. With this account, I did recently do a video kind of going through each of them and my different positions why I'm in them, but yeah, I think if I was to invest again, I would, or when I do invest again, it will more than likely be in the VHY or in VLC, maybe VLC, because these aren't positions I'm trying to grow. I do care about dividends, but I do kind of want to grow into this um, position. I did speak on it a little bit earlier um, in other videos, but it is actually a really interesting um, holding because I looked at my other holdings, I was probably a bit too over diversified coming into VH, um, VHY, it's a bit more of dividends. Uh, VAS is a bit more just a broad Australian market. And then the other one, I can't remember the name, just kind of the overall stock market. I think it's got 1,500 positions where this portfolio, I mean, this position, it's holdings is a lot more. There's only 20, I believe it is, yeah. And it's just the massive players in Australia. Even Combank, you look at their recent earnings, they actually released, it was, five point something billion in just the second half of last year, which is absolutely amazing for investors. And you can see Combank is a major player in this 
um, position, same with my other positions, you go through, you'll be able to see that, yeah, VHY will probably hold ComBank. Uh, VH, VAS definitely has ComBank and BELC definitely has ComBank. Overall, yeah, I think that's where I'll be putting my money, but yeah, the goal is still with this account to get it to around that $10,000 mark before the end of the year. And yeah, I should be on track to hit that um, more and more I put in, but yeah, I've kind of focused on my savings a little bit now, trying to build up a nest egg. But while we're kind of on that topic, I mean, you can look at the overall market. This is just the one day performance pulled back a bit, but look at the last week, bit of a mixed bag. Um, especially if you're diversified, I don't know if Microsoft's in, Apple I'm in. Energy's actually had a bit of a rough week, which is, as someone who doesn't invest in almost nice after, you see how good it's been as of late, but yeah, you kind of go to the one month and this is where you really see everything. You see all the tech jumps. It's a bit sad with Google, but all the other tech jumps, Nvidia 27, Microsoft 11, Apple 12, Meta 27, Tesla 63, like big jumps all around. Even in the banking financial section, JP Morgan, who I'm invested in, up 5.56. Not as big as um, the others, but still good just to see it up. Overall, yeah, not a bad month for the market, especially if you're an investor. It is nice seeing this after a very rough 2022. In regards of my kind of personal finance side of things, um, I was thinking of making a video kind of on my budgeting and um, what I'm saving because I do have a spreadsheet, but I need to work on it, make it a bit nicer. It kind of breaks down a little bit of how much I'm spending here, how much I'll be saving, kind of tracking. And yeah, I mean, I was looking at it just before and I've added an extra $10,000 since I started it. So that is nice to see because sometimes you don't really realize how much you've um actually put in until you're you actually take a look at it and you kind of look back at your other um older data in regards with my expenses for this month kind of going through i did have a quick look um and that's what i kind of wanted to speak on with these two articles that i saw kind of around inflation and cost of living because i know it's affecting myself as well this first one by cnbc um, consumer debt hits a record 16.9 trillion this was a really big eye-opener and most people probably don't know um, I work at a bank a major bank here in Australia so I see a lot of financial stuff I see people spending outgoings home loans kind of repayments everything going up more we'll touch on that a bit later but yeah this was a good read um, you can kind of see and go through it consumer debt and this is really based in the, um, the USA, but it's up 1.3 trillion, which is insane from just looking at it from our perspective as a regular everyday citizen. Big thing, mortgages. Um, and yeah, it is tough. People are really going through it. Um, I do have an example coming up further in the video where I kind of go through a bit more of the housing. There's a personal example of a guy in another article. Um, I believe it was, yeah this one which I'll go through in a little bit but yeah first I kind of wanted to go through the debt and I do watch a land listen to a podcast called the all-in podcast and they kind of were going through and speaking about the debts um the world's facing how much that's growing but it does kind of seem like a bit of a made-up number you hear people say oh we're in debt to who but yeah they're just the more debt the everyday person um has does make it a bit harder to get to things like retirement um keeps them in jobs longer um more financial stress but yeah kind of going through it a bit more overall debt here it is here's the part where the credit card balances grew in the fourth quarter and that's not something you want to see you don't want to see the everyday person that's especially in the banks we talk about responsible lending um people who are spending money which they don't have because at the end of the day the credit card is you're just borrowing money and then you pay it off but yeah the more that grows the more people are going to put themselves in financial pressure and you'll see this in the upcoming months the next part was yeah kind of around that inflation before we go into the housing side of things inflation has rose this from this is a little bit earlier in the month this is the 14th 
and you compare it to this time last year they're saying it's up 6.4 percent and even i go shopping now or i go buy something in terms of food clothes or anything everything is just way more expensive it feels like it feels like it's going to be even more than that in terms of they uh, the thing that they use to measure it as well is they use like a basket of um, goods and services people buy so stuff like bread all that stuff but just going out generally as well spending time with friends feels like it costs a lot more you go to restaurants you go just do anything outside that's just a basic expense it just feels more expensive feels more expensive they now cost me which sounds cheap probably to other people but yeah 60 dollars to fill my tank when i remember i used to be able to do it for 50 so or even yeah just situations like that and it just those little bites away at your savings and how much you could potentially be still having um yeah here's a nice little chart from it that's why i like going through these articles you get a real visual i like when they have these visual representations and kind of show yourself but yeah inflation is real it is hitting people like i said in my job you can see people coming back with higher mortgage repayments um and they do come in asking kind of how to get around it i was speaking to my uh, person i know he works with our affluent clients so people that make lots of money like your doctors your engineers lawyers those type of people and kind of managing their portfolios and he's saying we were just having a good conversation about how that's kind of been with him and um the kind of pressure he's under now with people kind of being worried but again this is what happens when rates rise trying to get inflation under control things are going to cost more and that's there's a lot more to it than that but just in regards with a youtube video you're not going to get too in depth about that the next part i kind of really did want to go a little bit further into is kind of around the housing market this is something i've personally become a lot more interested in as of late as someone who is saving for a house I mean, this is not something I really cared about when I was a bit younger, but now that I'm saving for a house and I rent and things like that, this you do kind of pay a bit more attention. And this was a good article that I read. As someone who does live in Australia, I cover a lot of the stocks and yeah, people see my stake portfolio and you just see like American companies and that's kind of the more news I cover, but I am based in Australia. And this Australian housing crisis, how RBA interest rates hikes are pushing families closer to the edge this was a really interesting article going through this um you can read it yourself you can go search it up it's on the guardian but just kind of going through about especially in sydney i do feel bad for people who live in sydney the house prices are already so expensive and kind of going through i did read um i did read through it but i will recap some of it with you like he does speak on that he has already refinanced yeah i'll go through here we were talking to a broker and he said, look, it's not really worth putting anything in a fixed rate. It won't go up that much, which is questionable. Everything they've been saying is we don't expect it to go high for the next few years. It had a material impact on our decision we made. Their home cost 700000 which is pretty expensive. It's not too crazy what you see, but it is very expensive. Since the rates hikes, they'll have to pay an extra $400 a month to $3,000 when i see stuff like this i kind of try to put myself in their situation and spending three thousand dollars a month on just housing does seem a bit insane i mean i'll try to work it out so let's say you were spending three thousand times twelve thirty six thousand dollars a year thirty six thousand dollars let's say you're on a eighty thousand dollar salary oops that's a bit much take 36k what forty four thousand dollars you're left with and that's without you even getting taxed let's say you get taxed so let's say maybe your eighty thousand dollars is down to like 65 something around this range who knows probably even less <laughs> now you take out that thirty six thousand especially you see in the thing he does have kids as well let's say you're paying i don't know take two kids let's say fifteen thousand dollars in total in school fees fourteen thousand dollars what about food you have everyone has to eat um i don't know rough estimates eight thousand eight hundred dollars a month or whatever 
feeding kids, stuff like that. But yeah, you're just overall, you're left in a really bad situation. That's why it is really hard, especially for single parent households. And he did speak about refinancing. That's another major thing we see at the banks is it's a really big refinance market. Um, people are looking, they're coming off um, fixed. There's millions of people coming off, probably or hundreds of thousands coming off fixed. And they'll be going from, let's say you were sitting at 2% rate before. Now you're going, it's rolling over. And now you're at a 6% rate, which is a huge increase for most households, especially just your average everyday Aussie who's just, trying to get through life, trying to send their kids to school, trying to save a bit of money while they can, and yep, pay off their house. Here's another one. Um, in this volatile housing market, here's how to know when the bottom is. And this is a bit of a, I don't know, the, the headline is a bit, sits a bit weird, but, because you can never really judge when a bottom truly is gonna happen. Going through. This is a bit of a, like, like I said, an American um, kind of, not take on it, but this is an American example. This is in Chicago. Um, I did look, there was actually a really good, in, I want to see if I can find it. I don't think I have it exactly here, or it might have been in this one. I'll have a quick look. Here we go. It wasn't just here, but it was kind of speaking about how unlivable um, Australia is compared to other major cities in terms of your annual salary to the housing price, especially in places like America. Even in the UK, it's better than what it is like here in Australia. The housing prices, if you live in Melbourne or Sydney, you're going to be in a horrible situation. Um, it's nice when you have the house and it's paid off, but... Yeah, it is really hard. Like the government does have things like the first home owners a grant and stuff like that, but it doesn't really help too, too much in terms of, especially if you're by yourself trying to get into the housing market. Kind of going through this again. Where was it? Here. Yeah, this is a bit more of an American example. They do try to kind of give you a bit of a look into when it could potentially be helping i mean you look in america they're going through the same problems we are um cost of living everything's going up over there as well but yeah and when you're just speaking about houses it is hard to kind of beat out the housing situation in australia it is very hard in australia for especially a lot of young aussies who just purchased their first house or are just trying to get their feet under them and yeah putting myself in the situation i know i'm still renting so that's around yeah it's a few hundred that you spend a week and you do kind of think rent is going up i know mine's been lifted a lot of my friends has been lifted as well what's it going to look like if i had saved all this money again with the calculator let's say i i don't know what the average let's say people are spending around 320 a week so let's go 52 that's 16 grand um let's say you're renting for four years that's that's getting you towards a house deposit imagine this and it was getting interest while you were saving it so let's see zero two there you go so and then yeah you kind of look at the interest you could potentially be getting or you add it on um there's always the opportunity cost of you not having the money but yeah, it's just hard for everyday Aussies, especially young Aussies, to get into a house. And it's probably a big issue worldwide as well, but it's more what I can see with me where I am here. Going through again, I did also want to, whilst kind of covering that, I did want to touch on, yeah, like my personal side of things, saving for a house. And it is a bit of an interesting, um, when you are renting and you're spending money, you do kind of want to look at, is it worth it to live out? Lots of people can do have the option of moving out. Sometimes they move back in to save for a house, especially when it gets to the business end of things. But yeah, like you think, I know I had a conversation with my mate. Would you sell out of some of your positions to have a bigger deposit down for your house and just things like that. And yeah, at the moment you can get a bit of 
a house is more than just the asset is what I say as well. It's a living situation. You have a roof over your head. You can't live in a stock portfolio. <laughs> That's the example I always use. You can't, it's not going to house you. It's not going to create memories with friends or anything like that. It's just an asset. A house is more than an asset. So yeah, that's another conversation I've had is kind of would you sell out a lot of your positions to get a bigger deposit? And yeah, it is probably the smart thing to do, but I'm not a financial advisor. So if don't take this, just take this with a grain of salt is what I should say. Hmm. There we go. So kind of moving into the new side of things as well. I'm sure everyone who's looks at into anything with tech or anything to do with business space of things has kind of seen the what's kind of been happening with the AI chatbots. I mean, Google has one now, Microsoft has one. And people are immediately, as soon as it comes out, people immediately turned it negative. Here, this was an article. It took less than 24 hours for Twitter to corrupt an innocent AI chatbot. You had people putting stuff into it to make it say racist remarks or um, political remarks and stuff like that and yeah it is kind of ruining the experience because this is kind of the news you get instead of the positive news about how good it can be or what it can do for you guys or how it can make your life better but you get kind of stuck with this and yeah do you kind of go through i know i haven't really been able to give it a proper shot yet but i have watched videos of people giving it a good um turn and kind of asking it questions kind of get it to write stuff for you and you see the stuff where it's like you can give it five things and it can write a new york times article for you and that is kind of crazy to think but we will need to have people who moderate these the ai chatbots because yeah people can lead it to say certain things and that can kind of reflect bad on the company because you look at it from i don't know let's say from microsoft's perspective People aren't going to look at it and say the AI chatbot is the one that said the racist things. They'll put it onto Microsoft. And as a company, especially the size they are, they don't want negative press or bad news around the company, especially when the stock's been hit so hard already. It just doesn't, <laughs> for more than just a financial aspect, you just don't want that stigma around your company. But yeah, this is just the world being the world and kind of putting these negative stuff out there and... Hopefully it doesn't have a major effect and hopefully we can get, because the AI chatbots have had issues already, but the more and more that it gets refined, um, the better and better it will be. And the better and better it will be for the average consumer who hopefully has a bit of an alternative to search. And yeah, I know I'm, it's, it's something I'm keen to try out. I saw in Australia, they banned it from certain schools to yeah, people were probably using it to write assignments or essays and kind of help with that. So it's another interesting development this is where tech's kind of going another big piece of news was actually around section 230 section 230 you might actually not know this is an american thing um the supreme court will hear the two cases of gonzalez versus google yeah this is around google and it's kind of around free speech and i'll read through on this a bit more Nearly everyone who speaks online relies on Section 230. So Section 230 is on all your big sites like your Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google, all those things. It has been around for a while. It's a very actually well done law, but when it was done, things were a lot different. There wasn't AI chatbots. Um, tech wasn't as big as it is now. I mean, you look at 19, 1996, that's before even the, um, the dot-com bubble. Where is it now? Here, section 230 is a law that promotes free speech online because users rely on online intermediaries such as our vehicles for their speech. They can communicate to a larger audience without needing financial resources or technically know how to distribute their speech. Yeah, it's just kind of around free speech and to get into it a bit more, um, what's kind of happening here is, I don't want to touch on all this stuff, but it's it's around promoting um, uh, and inciting terrorists and dangerous activities. Um, if you want a bit more information, you can always go look at it. Section 230, like I said, is broad. It protects small blogs, websites, yeah, giants like Google and Twitter. But it is necessary. It's very necessary 
the Gonzalez vs. Google is the current one that's going on right now in America. To get to get more briefs, you can kind of look into it, but they will need to update it. It's something that needs to be updated. It's good to read about and just hear how it affects everyone because this is something we kind of take for granted. You don't think about it until something like this happens. And a good example I heard was actually around. So the three examples they use is the paper you write a book on can't be, so it's a paper, the book and the newsstand. The, you can't sue the paper because the person did the writing on the paper. It's not the paper that did anything wrong. The book you can sue because the book might have incited violence or just been negative. And then the newsstand, you can technically still sue. It didn't write the stuff, but it chose to promote it. So that's like the same as if a, I don't know, the New York Times or something like that promoted um, negative speech stuff or something that was inciting violence or anything like that. But you can't sue the paper. And that's kind of what they're going through here to see if what are they going to do with AI in the future and the recommendation sections would like if when you go on TikTok, you get the for you page and then you get what you follow as well. So if a user goes onto the for you page, they have to know and acknowledge that what they're paying. I mean, what they're using is with algorithms. Whereas is the for you is just strictly for you. It's exactly what you follow. So more on that to come soon, but kind of as this kind of plays out, but yeah, it is interesting to look at, especially someone that works. And I mean, when I say works, I mean, makes YouTube videos on, on the platforms that are affected directly by this and anyone who uses technology, social media is affected by this. They just don't realize it. The next kind of one I wanted to touch on as well was um, actually the train derailment that happened in Ohio. I thought this was really interesting when I looked more into it. It happened in a place called East Palestine. So this train derailed with, where is it here? Pack the uh, toxic chemicals, yeah. And burnt in a huge, so they actually burnt it. And there was a reporter that was actually reporting on this in America. She's just like a local person. So she was trying to take videos and it was actually all the fish dying and issues with the chickens and stuff like that. And if that means it's airborne, what happens to the people of East Palestine? This is massive. I mean, yeah, people can kind of look who to blame and stuff like that, but the citizens, because this can actually lead to things like cancer, sickness. The, yeah, here it is. 5,000 people live near the Pennsylvania. Um, Pennsylvania state line. Sorry, my pronunciation. And yeah, it is big because if this gets into the water systems, that's people's fresh water they're drinking can lead towards things like cancer. If it's changed the pH, that's probably what killed the fish. And yeah, if it's killed the chickens, I mean, it's airborne after they've burnt it. I'm not a science expert, but what I've seen on it, it is very interesting. But what is going to happen to these people? They can't They'd have to leave their homes. Um, maybe the kids have school and maybe people work from there. But yeah, it's obviously not safe at all. If it leads to things like you can see complained about suffering headaches and say people have been sick because it's been airborne when they burnt it. So it's more than just their water because I try to put myself in their situation. I wouldn't want to be drinking that water either. Um, and you'd have to evacuate these people two weeks since it happened. You didn't see much news about it either in terms of kind of big coverage. It's been kind of kept a little bit under wraps. What do I think will happen? Um, we'll have to see in 20 years when potentially people come up with sicknesses or something that led from it. And that's just not what you want to see. And I saw people talking about it in terms of closing it off, but countries rely heavily on these railways and getting these things to places so people can use these resources. So it's not like something you can shut down, but there was easing on legal easing for these um, railway companies because it was a brake issue. Apparently, apparently there was an issue with the brakes. Um, that's why those problem happened. And I can only imagine, yeah, the people who live there were just the unlucky ones that it happened right where they live. They've been moved out now, but 
if I was them, I wouldn't want to drink the water. I wouldn't want to be there either. And it is a big change to these people's lives. Yeah, residents have complained. Hazardous chemicals spilled from train killed thousands of fish. And residents have talked about finding dying or sick pets and wildlife. Not something you want to see. Yeah, you can see. Look how big the fire is. God. Would... Will this be something that's... Again, I didn't see much coverage of it, so I don't think it will be something that's covered for much until the future when we see the real effect this has had on the community. Um, whether it does lead to sickness, whether it does lead to them having to close off this area for a while until it all gets sorted, but I know I wouldn't want to be there at this minute and I would I don't blame anyone there for wanting to move I think the government should house these people somewhere else and there should be some type of compensation from the either railway company train company on why this has happened especially with the brakes issue and yeah I hope these people get treated well because this is obviously throwing a massive stone into their lives and it's a big thing so we'll follow this up in a few years and see kind of the full then we'll be able to see the whole outcome of this situation. Overall, I also just wanted to kind of touch on my channel and kind of how things have been going. Start of February, I was uploading a lot more. Recently, I've kind of slowed down a little bit, but yeah, kind of taking a step back, but it is good to see things still growing. I actually do have an Excel spreadsheet here. Uh, I'll make it a lot nicer and I'll track things and put in charts, but I figured I'd do this at the start of the year. So I was on 214 when January started. And now I'm already on 317. And with, even with the slower, re it's been really slow lately, um, the last few days. That's because I haven't really been uploading. But it's great to see the growth. And hopefully the more I can upload videos, longer form ones as well, shorts, mixing it up. The more subscribers, the more content, the better content. But yeah, it's good seeing the growth. And hopefully sooner than later hit the 1000 mark and get the 4000 watch time and then yeah get monetization which is a big thing for youtubers i know it's not something that's really covered much it's a bit taboo but yeah i'll make it this all nice i'll put a graph in and hopefully i can kind of track the portfolio and the youtube channel as they go hand in hand a little bit going back to the portfolio i did have some changes i was thinking of making but there's some positions I do really just want to leave because I don't want them as much anymore. That is kind of Amazon and Google, but they're so low right now. There's no point in actually selling. So they're just kind of holding that until further notice. Then I will get rid of them and yeah, kind of trim down the portfolio again. In regards with everything else, I did do a recent video on actually, yeah, three best and three worst ones from the portfolio. I said Apple... I was kind of middle on. I think it will have a good year. It's a very strong company. Amazon has lots of room for growth. Costco room for growth. Google room for growth, even though I don't really believe in it as much. I think it's got the best business model with search, but from an investor standpoint, especially when I'm trying to diversify, it's probably if I pick the tech giants, Apple and Microsoft would stay and Google would probably be the one that gets cut. JP Morgan, we saw it's actually had a good month, but yeah, it's just another position I keep to diversify and I'm now actually up on it a little bit, which is nice. And yeah, just the overall market. I mean, there was a period of time when I was investing extremely heavily into VOO. That's when I was trying to grow this portfolio before my Vanguard portfolio, before I grew my savings. It was kind of just this portfolio and I was dollar cost averaging, but kind of looking at the long period I was buying in when things were high so the more I bought in now I've tried to get this down it's down to the 388 but yeah at the moment in time I can still buy in with it being below but it is a bit annoying kind of how the market's been the last while but I can't complain too much this position has grown actually really big um, I do actually want to change see if I can so this is the equivalent of so 12 five seven nine one so five seven nine one eight thousand four hundred and seventeen australian dollars which might not seem like a lot to other people but to me that's a decent position and yeah that's why the um the dividends are bigger for this position it it massively 
weighs my portfolio in terms of especially this Vanguard account. You look at pretty much all these other ones combined are basically what this one is. I think I'll continue to grow it whenever I don't know what I want to buy. I just put it into VOO, just kind of putting it into the market. And yeah, I touched on a little bit earlier what I'm going to do with my my stake, I mean my Vanguard portfolio, but yeah, it's just a bit more. Today, yeah, I just tried to make a bit of a longer form content video, potentially even in the future of something like a live stream. Like I think me, Kevin does video, really good videos of it. I'd like to do something like that in terms of like live stream, sitting down, talking to people about specific stocks. Yeah, to kind of recap what we covered today, I spoke a little bit about my portfolio, my plans, um, my personal finances, kind of my budget savings, what I'm going to do going forward, the a bit more on the kind of like the housing situation, where we kind of look through this guy's example of how it's been for him in Australia and Sydney, um, New South Wales, wherever he is from again, America's housing situation, a bit more on work life, a bit more speaking about how working at the bank and seeing people's finances and comparing it to what's happening in the market you can see people are really feeling it and then yeah just a bit more news about the twitter um and microsoft ai chatbots kind of the issues that it's been having there people are kind of doing to it on section uh, 230 which was lots of people probably don't know about but yeah just a bit more on free speech and across all the big tech players uh the uh, ohio train derailment and then yeah, just a bit more about the channel and kind of how it's grown as well. Overall, this is a bit more of a longer video I wanted to try out, so leave your thoughts on how it went, but yeah, it's just a bit more of a wrap up and I'm gonna try and do these every Saturday. Cheers.